Hello and welcome to Abidjan. Welcome to an exclusive France 24 interview with Laurent Pagbo, the former president of the Ivory Coast and the chairman of a new political party, the African People Party in Ivory Coast. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Mr. President, this is the very first time that you are giving an interview since you've returned to Ivory Coast and, in fact, since you've returned to politics. 40 years ago, you created the Ivorian Popular Front. In creating this new political party, are you breaking away from the past or was this a necessary step to move on? Well, it is always a break from the past when you are forced to start things again from scratch. But it was necessary. It was necessary because upon my return, I no longer recognized the political parties that we had been building up for such a long time, that we'd been building up ever since 1982. And we had to go back with the same ideas, with the same strength, with the same momentum that had been with us in the past to build the new party. And that's exactly what we did. There was a missing face at the Congress, Simone Bagbo. Does that mean that as of now there's a political schism between you or do you hope that she will join your group later on? Ask her. Ask her. I am going to move forward. I am moving forward in life. A party is made of those people who adhere to that party. So it is made of those people who wish to adhere to that party. Do you hope, maybe? Well, obviously, I would hope for everyone to adhere to our party and be a member. That's always when you create a new party, you always want people to embrace and be on board, but you can't always have everyone because then you would end up with a single party. But for me, anyone who adheres is a member. Alassane Ouattara, the 7th of July, you met him for the very first time, the first official meeting in over a decade. My understanding is that you are in regular communication. Do you think that you're going to meet again at a point in the future? There's a lot to talk about. I do hope that we will be able to meet in the near future. It would be a meeting during which we will be able to set down new goals, new objectives. For me, reconciliation isn't just a slogan. Reconciliation is not a slogan. What would that look like, though? A national dialogue, maybe? It's the term that comes up a lot. Who knows? Who knows? It really all depends on what the head of state will bring forward as a system to work within. But I think we need to deal with the past, draw a line in the sand so that we can move forward. My understanding is that during the meeting on the 27th of July, you brought up Guillaume Soro. You asked for him to be able to return, and apparently the president refused categorically. Do you confirm that? No, you misheard. I wasn't there, but... Well, uh, you weren't there, but whoever heard that, well, they misheard, or they misquoted. So tell us. Well, I really have nothing to say. There's a lot that has been said about many cases, including what happened with Guillaume Soro, and, and there's neither no nor yes at play here. President Ouattara raised the issue of Guillaume Soro. Do you want him to come back? Of course. I want the constitution to be applied. In our constitution it is written that no Ivorian will ever be forced into exile. That's what the Constitution says. Now we just need to apply it. If that was written down in the Constitution in the first place, 
It's in the text. It's because it reflects what so many people in Ivory Coast think and want. There's another issue here, and it's something that you brought up in your closing speech at the Congress. It's your sentence to 20 years of prison in the Central Bank of West African States heist. You said that you refused the sentence, and it might not be that simple, because that sentence still stands. Are you expecting Alassane Ouattara to throw out that sentence? I have no expectations. I have no expectations of him. But it is a Damocles sword over your head, right? It's not a Damocles sword above my head. I have no expectations. I never robbed a bank. I actually laughed. I laughed. I thought, this is just a bad joke. On ne va pas me faire admettre People aren't going to force me to admit that which is inadmissible. There's another topic that's at issue here, something that you've spoken on, or at least everyone's gathered it from what you've said. It's this project to set an upper age limit for people running for president, setting that at 75 years old. It's something that existed back in the Constitution in 2000. That limit was then removed in a subsequent constitutional reform. And that would mean that that rule would rule out Alassane Ouattara, Henri Conan-Bédié and yourself from running again for another presidential election if you so desired. I'm against it. Because you see this as a way to rule you out? No. No. No, I think it's just outdated. It's so outdated. We are civilized, we are well-raised people. And you can't just sideline a candidate because of their age. Joe Biden is older than I am. In your speech, you said two things. You said that you would be a politician until you die. It's you and you alone who will decide how that is. And then at the end of your speech, you said something that intrigued a lot of the activists out there. You say that what you want to do is to leave. It's almost like you're saying one thing and then the opposite. No, it's because I'm misunderstood. Oh, well, tell us. Okay, so I am in politics. And being in politics doesn't mean being the head of the PPA. Do you see what I'm saying? So I am in politics as head of the party. But I can also be in politics without being head of the party. That's what I'm trying to say. I was never a grassroots political activist. Ever since 1982, I have been involved in politics as the leader, either as head of party or secretary general. Later on, I became president. And after a certain time, it's exhausting, and then it becomes too tiring to take on all of that responsibility of being a pa party leader. So you'd like to see... Well, yes, I would like to see... I would like to see me stepping out of the political arena, and obviously in different ways that I won't cover here today. So moving away from leading the party, maybe, appointing a number two. OK, so yes, it means I would step down from leading the party. Someone else could take over head of the party. But it doesn't mean I'm stepping outside of politics, politics altogether. OK, well, you can imagine the question that I'm about to ask you. Everyone knows that there's that date coming up, it might change, but 2025 is going to be the next presidential election in Ivory Coast. Yes. Are you not going to run? Who knows? Who knows? As I have said in the past, but again, I was misunderstood again back at the time, is that I have filled every role. In politics, I was in the opposition, I was then president. And I also wrote a lot. I wrote a lot on what had to be done. I wrote what had to be done for Ivory Coast to be able to break into full development. And I'm going to continue to write. 
But what now? And actually, this is something I have said. Back in 1940, when de Gaulle was sitting in the plane, in the plane that was taking him to London, he wasn't thinking that he was going to go on to become the president of the French Republic. There are times in life where destiny is written for you. You're not ruling it out. Saying you don't know means maybe yes, maybe no. You could very well tell me I'm stepping down today. I've already been there. So that's, I guess that's exactly it. If the circumstances change and if circumstances would have it that we would have the best chances of winning without me as head of the party, then we will support the person who is best fit. So if the circumstances meant that they'd, they'd be more likely to win with you? Well then, yes, if it was with me as head of the party, why not? I'm not ruling out anything. And that's exactly what I said. What you don't want is to be ruled out because of an age limit, right? No, I refuse that as a notion. I would not want anyone to decide for me. I refuse that categorically. And I think that is because this is exactly how I led my political career. So, refusing. You, you mentioned the issue of presidential terms. Yes. This is a controversial topic here in Ivory Coast, but let's start with here. Alassane Ouattara ran for a third term. He said that he didn't want to but it was due to the death of, uh, due to disease of his number two, Amadou Gon Koulibaly, that he, his hand was forced and he had to run a third time. Do you believe he violated the constitution? He says no. Oh, I'm not going to be talking about the passing of Amadongo. He was actually one of my ministers. I think that the problem that we have in Africa is that we don't uphold the legal texts that we draft. Be it Ivory Coast, in Mali, or in Guinea. When we draft legal texts, it seems that we're just doing it to copy the Westerners just as a way of imitating what they do. But when it comes to actually acting, we do as we wish. But that's not how I think. When we draft law, when we draft a constitution, when we draft legal texts, we have to uphold them. Yeah, but you know the counter-argument, you change a constitution, it resets everything. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. People haven't abided by the law. So, Mr. Ouattara didn't comply with the constitution. Well, yes, what's the point of saying it, though? Well, it's worth saying, but let me come back to another question, because you gave some examples and we'll come back to those. But fundamentally, all of these issues related to term limits being reset or not, do you feel that this poisons African democracies? I would like to just say something on that. Because it encourages coup d'etats in some way. I am in favour of a two-term limit. Point final. And that's the end of it. Yes, that said, you may have people who are against limiting it to two terms. There are countries, there are countries in which there is no such limit to political terms. I mean, take the German Chancellor, for example. She was in power for 16 years. 16 years. But in the countries where there is a term limit. Sorry. Well, what she is being criticized for is not for her terms. She didn't go against any legal document, any law. And what Ufubani is being criticized for, it's not because he was in presidency for 33 years. It's because he was head of a single party. But he was in that position because there was no limit on terms.
So without a limit on terms, he just kept on sitting as president. And that's why we need to be rational. It is what democracy is all about. So we have laws that are in place. And we don't have to put in a two-term limit, but once there is that limit, then we have to uphold that limit. If people don't want to have two terms, then put it in the text. Okay, the French president uh, travelled to Chad after the death of Idris Deby in a way that seems to legitimise a transition of dynasty. Some people saw this as unequal treatment based on the virulent criticism that was levelled against the Mali coup d'etat. It's not my issue. The French president does as he sees fit. But I really didn't understand what happened there. But I will let the French president do what he sees to be the best fit. The French military presence in Africa now. Do you feel that it's time to question that presence? We've seen it in Mali. We know that there's a military, a French military base here, as you very well know. Is it now time to question that presence? Is it maybe time to send the soldiers home? It's something I've always questioned. Mr. Watoré closed it. Um, do you think that he should send the soldiers home? Well, it's not because that we want to close down French military bases in France that we are against to cooperating with France. But that said, the time for having foreign military bases in Ivory Coast is a bygone era. That time is now past. We are living in a time where we have to move towards more independence, a move towards more inter-African cooperation. That is what we need to work towards. Let's come back to the 31st of March of this year. I'm sure you remember the date. Of course. You were at the ICC, you were cleared. We remember your face. What was going on in your head? That's what I did. We saw that. Yep. I'm sure you remember that. But what about your head? Well, it's not what's in my head that we will find the answers. It's when we look to what's in the real world. For me, that trial, it was a form of forfeiture. OK, your co-accused, Charles Bligoudet, after being freed, um, he went on France 24 and other places to ask for forgiveness. He asked for forgiveness from the victims and he asked for forgiveness from the Ivorian people, because just as you, he was cleared of the worst crimes, but some crimes uh, did stick. There were 3,000 people who died. Oh, more than 3,000. Maybe more. Uh, many, many more. So, do you also want to ask for forgiveness because you were responsible? I'm not Charles Bigloudet. I'm Long Bagbo, former president of Ivory Coast. So, I wouldn't say such things about Charles Bligoudet. The problems at play here for Ivory Coast, and that are still present today, are very serious problems. We mustn't deal with them lightly. We must deal with them, we must discuss them, we must find those people who are responsible and hold them accountable and take decisions. We need to take decisions at the state level to be able to move forward. I'm not here to say who needs to be forgiven or not. Maybe that's what the victims want. No, the victims, they want us to deal with the problems, to find who are the, those who are to be held accountable. That's what the victims want. So they came after me, Bagbo. They came after Bligoudet and took us off to The Hague. Who's they? Nicolas Sarkozy? For example, he bombed my home. He bombed the presidential palace in Ivory Coast. Was he trying to kill you? Who? I don't know. I don't know what he was trying to do. But I do know that he bombed my home. 
He sent tanks, military tanks from the French army, to my home, to take me in like just a common criminal. And I wondered, deep down, what is the France doing here? What is France doing in an issue of electoral upheaval in Ivory Coast? But who knows? Do you still believe you won in 2010? Or the result? It's not even that? It's no longer an issue. No, it's no longer an issue because simply we can't backtrack. We have to move forward. We move forward. And I know how to move forward. Do you forgive Alassane Ouattara? I forgive everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering the questions here on France 24. And thank you at home for watching this interview. Please stay tuned for more information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President.